First of all, I, on behalf of CONVAC, CONCAN Bamboo and Can Development Center, welcome each and every one, the respected panelists, the participants, ladies and gentlemen, to this online seminar on rejuvenating the rural economy in times of COVID-19, scaling for bamboo products. My name is Mei Pokem Iyer. Actually, I belong to 1985 batch of IFS, and I'm born on Maharashtra Kader. And right now, I'm retired as PCCF. I retired in 90, uh, 2018, and at present, I'm settled in Nagaland, working with Nagaland Forest Management Project. It is a JICA, Japanese, Japan International Cooperation Agency assisted project for the last two years. Mr. Sanjeev Karbe and me, we met in 2008. And since then, we are in touch from time to time. I will take you through to this uh, session. However, before that, let me say something about Konbak. Konbak Bamboo and uh, Konkan Bamboo and Cane Development Center is a Section 25 notified for profit. A uh, non-profit company set up in 2004, facilitated by International Network for Bamboo and Rata, that is in BAR, through the Center for Indian Bamboo Resource and Technology, that is CPART. As one in BAR's action research site, ARS, Conbike focused its activity on the development of bamboo as a key resource for catalyzing an inclusive green economy. Over the last 16 years, CONPAC has made considerable progress in growing into a self-sustaining institutional ecosystem and has a fully uh, developed facilities for designing, prototyping, and productionizing market marketable bamboo products for Indian and international markets. It has also put in place mechanism to link more bamboo producers to larger lucrative markets and has emerged as a model that is being implemented elsewhere in India and abroad. The exp uh, expansive and intensive work put in to achieve this growth has also led to areas of expertise within the organization and spurred innovations. Kunbak has succeeded in changing the perception of bamboo from being a poor man's timber to a rich man's choice as a credible alternative material of high quality oat that is currently being used for furniture and construction. This has helped move bamboo up the value ladder as a material of choice for environmentally conscious community and for those consumers who seek novelty. Now let us come back to why bamboo. Bamboo, we all know, a fast-growing woody grass plant, also known as the green coat, has the potential to play a crucial role in catalyzing an inclusive green economy. It is the most environment-friendly plant on this planet, being one of the highest carbon sequestered among all floral species. It grows fast, measures within a few years and regrows after harvesting without the need of replanting, making it a perennial renewable resource. Bamboo is also a very effective plant to control soil erosion, raise the water table 
and improve fertility and even the most degraded soil. Bamboo can thus play a role in combating desertification by restoring degraded lands and uh, protecting forests. Bamboo provides both landholders and landless access to key markets, agriculture and wood products. It provides rural households the additional advantage of being able to add value through local level scale processing thereby, contributing to the creation of rural enterprise and jobs. The tensile strand of bamboo is also being harnessed to reduce. Use of steel in industries like construction and has the potential to generate exponential employment on site and off site in the construction industry. These qualities of bamboo are critical to the contemporary policy discourse on which a circular economy that involves designing products, services, and supply chain, which are regenerative, that is, which are based on renewable energy and resource resources to not generate waste and give products and materials in use for as long as possible. Bamboo can become the cornerstone of the circular economy and offers India the opportunity of to leapfrog to an inclusive green economy. Now, let us start the let us begin the uh, presentation first the first panel uh, panelist is mr sushant cs sushant he i'll just narrate a little bit about him he is the head national institute of design for bamboo initiative and national institute of design bangalore he is the principal designer at NID, Bangalore. He has graduated from National Institute of Design during 1998 in industrial design with specialization in furniture design. He has started his career with NID's outreach programs and consultancy services during 1998 and served as a faculty member in furniture and interior design during 2002 to 2005 in NID. Amdavar campus and from 2006, he is based at NID Bangalore. In 2007, he started a master desk program called Design for Retail Experience at NID Bangalore, which he is leading as discipline lead. During his career, he has worked on many projects in the areas of scope furniture, wire composite furniture, various interior design, many, many bamboo based projects and work with various craft clusters in different parts of India. He is also heading NID Center for Bamboo Initiative and 2010 onwards, which developed new bamboo application, applications and impart the knowledge through training programs and workshops. Currently, he is pursuing his PhD at National Institute of Design, Ahmedabad, on the topic of bamboo joints. Now, I invite Mr. Susan to give his presentation. Good afternoon, everybody. So, I will uh, go to uh, my uh, presentation. Yeah, I think uh, I hope you can see my presentation and you can uh, clearly uh, hear my voice. So uh, today, like, you know, uh, I'm trying to uh, share our experiences uh, in trainings because today's uh, session mostly on skilling for uh, bamboo product uh, in the time of uh, COVID. How we can, like, you know, use bamboo as a... Uh, uh, agent for economic development in the country at this difficult time. Because there are lots of people today 
in the country like lost their uh, uh, jobs their daily wages and how we can bring more people working with the bamboo sector and use uh, design bamboo and technology uh, as a um, uh, tool for uh, making their daily lives so nid like you know just uh, briefly telling it is established in 1961 at ahmedabad and in 2014 it become uh, institution of national importance and we have three campuses in ahmedabad uh, gandhinagar and bangalore and at nid uh, we have something called outreach program it has been there since nid's inception and then what was outreach doing is conducting lots of training programs for the craft sectors and uh, mainly it was introducing a new design uh, new skills and maybe new technique of working so with uh, this outreach department had imparted many training programs in the country in all types of craft so bamboo is one of the craft under uh, practiced under outreach program and later uh, because of uh, lots of work need to be happened uh, or was happening in bamboo sector and the potential of bamboo was increasing day by day so nid started uh, the center for bamboo initiative so professor ranjan at that time like uh, in uh, from 1970 onwards he started the activities of bamboo and later like now we have a full fledged bamboo studio in our uh, campuses so this picture is from our bangalore campus this is our uh, bamboo studio and what our bamboo center is doing is we explore various applications of bamboo new joints combinations new product furniture we conduct training workshop we develop course module for other institutions and for other organizations and we also conduct uh, many modules for uh, modules in bamboo uh, skills and design so when we talking about bamboo so bamboo is like a not one material okay it is each species is a different uh, material it have different uh, properties it have different uh, qualities everything so in india i have got many uh, species of bamboo and each one have different potential that how we can convert that into product and traditionally this knowledge has been developed through lots of uh, product and you know there lots of traditional knowledge that still we can bring into new application for the modern market and we have a very rich tradition if you look at all over india like if you travel every village you will find something or other things of bamboo and when we go to northeast you can see uh, everything is made of bamboo there is some picture for reference i have uh, i'm showing here and if you go to some market in the northeast this is a market in manipur uh, in uh, infal so you can see like still you can find in the market so much uh, the locally like so many pro products are made and sold in the market and when we go through villages also this is few pictures uh, recently i clicked from uh, manipur there are lots of product and it it have a different kind of uh, shapes forms weaves purpose the each basket have a purpose each box have a purpose so lots of this traditional knowledge traditional usages are uh, you now found and how these traditional knowledges are like you now pass on through Uh, generation to generation, and so people start working from childhood, working with their father, grandfather. So this knowledge has been uh, transferred like you no know, since many generations. So what is happening today is that we are losing that kind of a uh, knowledge transfer because people are traveling outside for other uh, jobs, and you know they are looking for other opportunity. Somewhere we are losing this traditional knowledge nowadays, and you can see the kind of skill. available still like people you know hold such kind of uh, excellent skill of uh, splitting the bamboo weaving into many shape and you no know, many other uh, skills are there so we need to identify all these skills and how we can bring into the uh, new era product with the same same skill so sometime like in nrd we do uh, looking at traditional skill bringing into the new new product or we also develop some kind of new skill that we have we can introduce to the uh, sector so both side both side we are looking and uh, tools and technology like you can see like traditionally they use only knife but uh, over the years if you go to any like you know 
places in the country like where people are working slowly like people are adopting many other uh, uh, tools and small technology that they can uh, afford like even uh, maybe a hand drill is a small thing or maybe a grinder so slowly like people are adapting to new technology and uh, many village we can find such kind of scene where people are earning their livelihood when you look at bamboo we have uh, various types of bamboo earlier i was mentioning and it actually like you no know, from hollow to solid or maybe a partially solid many varieties are there so we look at each of these bamboo differently then think about okay what we can develop then imparting that knowledge to the people through training programs or workshop or maybe like you no know, a structured uh, certificate program like you no know, through various institutions sometime like you no know, this kind of uh, uh, one once we develop a new product we might uh, uh, come, come up with a, we have to introduce new tools and technique so you can see like you no know, sometime lathes are introduced the artisan sometime different types of weaves are introduced even uh, bamboo bending so bending also something like still many people like you know ask how you can bend bamboo so we can bend it manually or maybe we can also develop like you no know, some kind of small technology that enhance uh, you know the workmanship and you know enhance the skill for mass production and sometimes that not like communication like you know when you go to a field or a you know rural side so communication also make lots of difference so when you have a uh, like you know when you go to north east especially if you have a local person who can talk uh, local uh, language it is much more effective than when we talking like in a you know without uh, uh much uh, knowing their local uh, way of communication so we also try to introduce uh, or maybe include people uh, from locally in our projects and this is my uh, like you no know, one slide even last time also i was showing last time i was more talking about design but this time along with design skill and technology okay so that what we need to see uh when we conducting any training or a design workshop or any training it cannot be in a isolation so we have to look at raw material we need to look at the design we need to look at the market we need to look at the user and along with that we need to introduce new skills and new technology sometime technology may not be possible because some rural area area like we cannot have electricity so we need to uh, completely depend on the traditional their tools and uh, uh, whatever technology they locally use so we have to align our product range our design or whatever the product uh, uh, that we plan we have to align with what is available so it cannot be in isolation and when we talk about training or imparting new knowledge there are many things like you know we need to look at design training is one of the thing technical training production training because making one piece is not enough how you make like a uh, 50 piece 100 piece or a 1000 piece because we need to make such kind of uh, input and costing is a very important or how you brand and market packaging it's a very important part and when we look at an ideal model this is one of the model developed by professor ranjan when we were restructuring the bcdi in 2002 3 so it has to be it cannot be just like imparting only a skill or maybe like you no know, few tools it has to look at holistically like you need to look at plan product innovation technology market information technology for various services you need to have a lots of research education training seminars uh, field uh, trainings and knowledge dissemination no or also such kind of you need to integrate everything in a complete like institutional level so bcdi report if some of you have might have uh, gone through that report or if you not gone through you can contact me i can send it to you it's in a very ideal model and professor ranjan had suggested at that time and this is some of the picture when uh, bcdi was uh, uh, restructured in 2002 and 3 so you can see like lots of activities were happening from product development training introduction to new technology even uh, people were introduced to use computers or maybe you no know, latest technologies everything so it is required artisan is not just 
okay no it's whatever you tell just make only product they need to know what is happening outside they need to be connected to outside they need to contact people outside so they need to have a complete integrated development it is not only design or you know skill training so that later uh, from bcd we have gone to the field so this is one of the cluster that professor anjan had uh, taken uh, to develop the katlamara cluster where uh, kankaich that is uh, 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 olivari bamboo was uh, formed and uh, with that particular bamboo we have developed a range of collection and later this one particular chair he picked up the mar market and later we have given complete know how how to batch produce it so with basic tools and technique not going to big technology so you can see uh, how the jig was made prepared for assembly okay how the how how, the, how you can see on the right side uh, each of the pieces that is more more or less it is uh, same size same dimension etc so when you go for production this kind of technique needs to be introduced so this is that uh, katlamara chair similarly like you know we have worked with mp state bamboo mission so initially like to understand we have introduced the few of the new products this is the dustbin that uh, we introduced in uh, one of the cluster that is arda in the madhya pradesh and uh, this is a couple of uh, uh, color variations of the same product color and shape variation and we also introduce uh, children product furniture everything in that cluster so it was a surprise for them you see the local material going completely in a different way another cluster in madhya pradesh that is balakat so there will be introduced a uh, knock down furniture how you make like you know, they were making furniture with this fixed uh, joinery so we introduced them some amount of knock down joints it is the initial uh, training that we did and later uh, another uh, stage 2 we have uh, looked at more going two stages there is a one is a design training and second is a production training so initially like the first workshop we taught them various kinds of design and in the second training we told them how to produce it okay how to produce it we have given a proper dimensional drawing with uh, each component how it is made okay with the jigs and pictures how you can make how the assembly happen so with all the production details specification we have given the complete uh, set of instruction this were the jigs and pictures how you can make uh, uh, in a huge number you can see some pictures in the bottom same product is made in uh, you know so many numbers and it same more or less i don't i don't say like same size because bamboo diameter all that comes in different so maybe more or less 90 95% you can make same size same dimension this is some of the collection in madhya pradesh then uh, later we converted that into uh, bamboo product manual uh, one of the manual was released by dr nitin gadkari ji the minister uh, uh, then with kerala bamboo mission similar approach initial couple of workshop was very more introduction to the new skill new product to the artisan so this was some of the product in initially introduced to the kerala artisans and later it it was gone uh, one step further with a uh, more furniture some of the output other uh, accessories but more focused on the uh, mementos and trophies because it is a big area that taking up in the market now many uh, people in kerala they making bamboo mementos not the same design inspired from these people are making their own design that is is some something like very important okay people should start think themselves artisan should create new product there are some people who is making remarkable product in kerala you can see some of the product that we introduced and again they, there also we made this product manual with uh, all the instructional dimension guidelines everything for artisans to follow whatever that we taught this is in uh, nagaland nbda one of the general workshop where we introduce furniture baskets dustbins lamp shades many product some of the outcome uh, this was uh, one initiative with uh, cbtc in uh, 2009 10 so nid uh, nid campus 
the artisan uh, came here and uh, we developed a range of knock down furniture in the second phase of this happened in uh, nagaland in uh, nbda uh, campus where again the improved product was introduced which was displayed in the uh, second uh, world bamboo day happened in uh, kohima so this was some of the display that nid had put up in uh, kohima after that uh, workshop it was like you no know, uh, very well accepted but somewhere artisans were not like you no know, encourage like there was no proper marketing into like you no know, introducing them to the market so many like drawbacks were there so that is what i am repeatedly telling design and training skill training may not work only like you no know, if it is isolated other component has to be included in the entire process the branding marketing okay proper training has to be given to artisan how to handle the business all that is very important this is another example of our training uh, in tripura is the jaika and nid initiative uh, through bcdi like no we have uh, uh, conducted uh, this training program so there also we introduced lots of uh, furniture toys and accessories and we also like no told them how you make maybe more number of hangers at one go or maybe a tray more number in one go so there is a method like no where again we have given all dimension or kind of instruction you make the component then you assemble so i can see at the end of uh, 15 days we have uh, many hangers like is made in like no 20 25 numbers trays made in like no 10 15 numbers then every product like no we have tried to make it like more numbers for artisan to learn how you like make a multiple number of uh, outcome and again like now we have uh, produced this uh, production product manual so where we have given all the instruction and this is the one uh, in again in uh, imphal with uh, metac so that one, that was also like now recently metac had started uh, selling in the market so the outcome was displayed at rajbhavan and uh, Uh, the governor honorable governor came and uh, given uh, uh, good feedback about all the product introduction then every time like now what we tell in the workshop in the initial stage treatment of the bamboo so treatment is very important so without treatment nobody should attempt to send product to the market because that will uh, spoil your uh, uh, spoil your name because the bamboo if it is not treated it may the product may uh like you no know, live long so you need to treat the bamboo this is something like uh, every every training program we tell people and uh, we need to expose the product to the market so various occasion like you know we exposed all this product and we also conduct international workshop at nid so this is some of the images and we conduct seminar to promote as much as possible the bamboo to the public and we also like you no know, update entrepreneurs like you no know, people come here and this is one of the example but many people come to our nid bamboo uh, center to know about new product development new ideas how they can update uh, with the you know, new knowledge so we keep up giving such kind of information like you no know, free of cost because we don't charge like anybody coming and just talking to us knowing more about new product all that so we promote more entrepreneurs who should come here and learn and uh, we also included bamboo input officially in in our nid curriculum so people learn about bamboo as a raw material from the foundation like you know we give them like bamboo input and people make lots of product uh, it is officially in our curriculum and we also conduct workshop for general public okay like you know we uh, in in nid itself we conduct a one day workshop half day workshop or maybe sometime outside as part of any other program we conduct the workshop so as many people they can come and join and make some product and understand bamboo and appreciate the quality of the material that is the purpose so as much as people appreciate the material they start accepting the bamboo as a their day to day life uh, material so that is our uh, uh, like no uh, effort that we, we are making and uh, last i want to talk about uh, during this uh, covid time also uh, we can think about giving this input as a very very like you no know, specific like whatever like la last day the 
uh, I think like maybe Tony will be talking about it. They launched uh, this uh, uh, three uh, small packet of uh, you know three kind of products. Okay, so during this time, how you can manage selling online? Okay, maybe uh, teaching like you no know, people online. All, all so many things can happen. And in the process, with all our uh, knowledge or maybe experience, we have uh, made few textbook for uh, Nimi Chennai. It is for to be used in ITAs. And uh, we have worked on a major part of it, but later the last part is done by CBTC later. And the major, like all this, you can see, it is completely illustrated uh, manual, illustrated textbook. People don't need to read it. Okay, that was our challenge. If this is if this textbook going to the different part of the country without even reading, can people uh, understand what has to be done? That was our effort. So we have done that. Like maybe thousands of illustrations we have done, and with that, maybe like no uh, many textbook are, are developed later by Nimi Chennai, and uh, Node also like we had prepared so many uh, instructional videos that people can follow and uh, you know, learn about how to work with Map. So this has not been launched. Uh, it will be launched later, and uh, maybe like we are in the process of maybe. Uh, preparing the complete uh, set of instructional uh, guidelines. So that is it. So maybe like if any of you like feel to contact me uh, for training or maybe to know more about Bamboo, the product, everything, uh, you can contact, you can uh, take down uh, my number and you can uh, write to me in, in my email. So I think that uh, uh, it's a limited time, so I have not in included the product pictures here i was I, had, I was showing the product picture in a previous uh, two uh, webinar so i have not included the product pictures but if any of you want to know more about you can always write to me so thank you very much uh, thank you susan uh, thank you for your presentation and then uh, your talk on advancing advancement of technology on design application has been wonderful and but now we have a question uh, the question is from uh, Suresh Babu Kalikat Kerala his question is we are ready for mass production like China's production for that uh, government give, give any support to us that is the question so uh, Sushan or any other panelists can answer that question yeah, I think this is more to uh, any assistance from a uh, government. Okay, yes. but I can ensure from NID side, we can ensure with the proper guidelines how you can approach the bamboo, which local species, you can make standardized component, how you can assemble and think about mass production. So that part, NID can ensure. So what government scheme, that maybe somebody else can uh, answer that. Anybody want to? Anyone? Or maybe somebody from a Bamboo yeah. Mission? Yeah. I would like to ask. Uh, sir, uh, two days back, uh, we had one webinar where MSAB Minister Honorable Nitin Gadkariji uh, was also one of the speakers. And he said that uh, he is willing to support all Bamboo entrepreneurs uh, through either uh, through MSAB different schemes. It can be individual uh, loan proposal and subsidy, or it can be a cluster development project. So, so uh, MACB ministry will definitely help for a public. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sajib. I hope, uh, Suresh, you are satisfied with that answer. Uh, now, let's move on to the next speaker, Dr. Vipin Jaula. Dr. Vipin Jaula is Head Center for Bamboo Development, IPRITI, uh, Bangalore, Government of India, currently working as scientist E at Indian Plywood Industries Research and Training Institute. That in a short, that is called IPRITI. And that is under the Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change, Government of India, Bangalore. Dr. Chawla's research for his PhD degree was in both science 
and hydrodynamic behavior of eucalyptus wood under vacuum drying. With over 19 years of progressive uh, experience as wood scientist and over 16 years of experience as faculty and wood science and technology, Dr. Jaula possesses excellent teaching and entrepreneurial skills, proficient in managing fund generation, defining, conducting, managing research and its application to industry. Dr. Chawla has core competence in the area of sustainable food based byproduct. Now, Dr. is your time. Thank you, sir, for introducing me. I'm Dr. Vipin Chawla Sator. I'm the scientist here. Please uh, put my slides on the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, Indian Plywood Industry Research and Training Institute is a government body under this Ministry of Environment and Forest, Government of India. And we have head offices in Bangalore and the field station and the Kolkata and one is in Mohali. And basically these two field station work as the extension work and testing programs. Next, please. Next. So we have four mandate under this program, under this institute, the research training testing and extension division under this research program we have to develop a various panel products and substitute the wood for this natural to give the less pressure on the natural timber and make a other resources from like lignin based resources agro residue resources or other any fiber material which can replace the solid wood uh, coming from the natural forest and it also help in the conservation of forest next please next Next slice. Please uh, make it next slide. Next. Yeah, uh, make it next slide, sir. So next slide is the extension research and testing is my next presentation. So under this testing and uh, extra extension we have other two divisions and which we have to do the most of the things which is uh, develop the product has to be standardized as per the international standards and extension activity is a activity in which we are giving the technology to the other uh, bodies to get it industrialization or make it application so uh, under this bamboo programs you know the cbd having the primary processing of bamboo next please next some issue with the uh, next please so primary processing consists of the various parts of the bamboo cross cutting splitting and uh, fiber makings and the slivers makings and uh, these programs we can give the lot of the uh, somebody asked the questions can we make the craftsmanship to the industrialized industrialized way so this will machine mechanized way to get the material from the round bamboo into the various forms which is in the flat form or in the split forms next slide Please make it next present uh, next slide, sir. Next slide. So after this prime mechanized process, we have to go to the product development. So product development, we have a four types of the products. One is the mat based products. Second is the strip based products. Third is the crush based products and fourth is the dust based products. Definitely the uh, primary processing also nowadays a big demand for the other material is called agarbatti sticks which is very uh, demandable products in the industries. So we have a huge requirement of the agarbatti stick in the market nowadays. We stop the material from the China. Uh, coming from the China and we have to generate by owns. So the good quality material of the agarbatti stick is the bamboo tulda. Please make it next slide. We need an internodal length distance of this bamboo is a 15 inch. And the requirement of this bamboo basically what we need
please make next slide. Can you move my presentation to the next slide, panel members? I think some problem in my presentation. Can I share the presentation from here? This is the where we are already explained it how to make it cross cutting radio splitting of bamboo and we need all these machines with that much specification and this is a not removal machine which create a problem in the products so bamboo sliver making machine bamboo sliver making again is thin sliver making machines and this is the rural community livelihood generation program in this program uh, most of the ladies which unemployed ladies can get an employment opportunity in the family uh, house itself and the next industry is the bamboo garbatti industry the annual requirement of uh, round six uh, approximately 50 sorry, 500 tons and 150 tons per day we need approximately per day throughout the years we need and this is the possible only when mass production of bamboo citrus is possible so this is the process line of agarbatti sticks Next is the bamboo mat veneer composites. Bamboo mat based products is the bamboo mat board, bamboo mat veneer composite, bamboo mat corrugated sheets, bamboo mat trays, molded skin doors, bamboo rich cap, bamboo strip base. Bamboo strip base products. Bamboo strip base is the laminates from bamboo development for the transport of vehicle coatings of the wall cladding purpose. Crush based bamboo lumbers, bamboo stand lumbers. Bamboo in round or split form also is possible in the house construction use. This is the application of the BMB. And this is again the furniture making, the very good applications for storage purpose in the making the cabinets and all these file folders. And we have developed a bamboo storage bin as per the food CFTRI grade, one ton and 0.5 ton. Bamboo bat media composite, we can make a combination of bamboo with the ply also. Bamboo mat corrugated sheets, this is also one of the innovative products from the bamboo mat based products. It is a highly uh, resistant product and low weight, good strength and having good aesthetic appearance. And bamboo mat rich cap to locking the two mats to in a giving a shapes to the housing purpose and dust and rodents will not come into the house. And bamboo mat molded show skin doors. It's also replaced the mesonite doors, which is coming mostly from the outside of the country or preparing in India and giving a lot of the pressure on the timber. Here's a chair from the mats. This is a, uh, just a mattress, bamboo mattress, or the innovative products for this handicraft purpose. Bamboo flattened board, just flat the bamboo, semi uh, cut the bamboo in a two halves and press it, crush it and press it in the veneer. The bamboo wood, just like a solid wood, but it's a bamboo material. This is a file folder, table cabinets, flooring tiles. And we also have the technology for the bamboo matchstick. It is also one of this, although it's a cottage industry, but having a lot of the scope. 
and we have a lot of the activities from the bamboo sites and creating a detailed project report for the all these bamboo based products somebody want to interest it to install a factory in some other location so we can give a technology for consultancy for dpr making and we also give a customized training for the industries we establish common facility center bamboo lumber laminates mat base agarbatti industries agarbatti stick industries bamboo mat stick industries we give training for the bamboo housing bamboo preservation or any kind of program which related to the bamboo need a technical help in the specification for the machineries we give a technical consultancy and technology transfer for these things if you need any information please contact to us so this is the my presentation so if you need any question you can ask me uh, thank you dr vipin uh, um, there is one question actually i it is related to all of us so it is come from uh, vinayak uh, kumbar pune okay how much minimum investment required for bamboo furniture manufacturing industry that is the question yeah so it's again depend upon the we want to establish a bamboo lumber based industry based furniture so it may be 20 crore is the project if you want to start with the laminates we can give the technology within 5 5 crore rupees and if you can arrange the material from the kerala sites or the kerala bamboo board is having the laminate industry within a 50 lakhs or 60 lakhs you can arrange a furniture industry in house and one question somebody asked the question that how much minimum fund is required from the government is possible so i want to add it in this point sir the national bamboo mission is having the program they have developed the incubation center in the various place under this uh, mission program and you can just person can go and work with the raw material and just invest the time and manpower and the, they will provide the material on the money basis and you can develop the furniture there itself and you will get that furniture for your purpose so government is giving lot of the input to develop the skill giving a business to develop entrepreneurship in india so i don't think so ki we need depend upon the chinese based products indian bamboo is far better than the chinese bamboo having good strength good property so why not utilize our resources to give it indian economic boost up thank you doctor yeah thank you uh, uh, thank you for your presentation now let's move on to the next speaker mr tony ball now i invite uh, mr ball uh, let me introduce uh, uh, mr ball to you he is the ceo of uh, yoravu Indig indigenous science and technology study center wayanda kerala Yuravu is a non-governmental organization registered under the Indian Trust Act. It works with people, governments, and private businesses as a development partner. Yuravu Indigenous Science and Technology Study Center is a bamboo-based uh, grassroots development organization based in Wayana District, Kerala. One of the flagship initiative uh, by them is the livelihood support program through which they support more than 100 artisans to find their livelihoods by making bamboo products mainly artifacts. Now Mr. Tony please. Over to you Tony. Thank you sir thank you thank you. Thank you words sir and thank you Sanjeev ji for uh... and contact team for organizing this event so I'll just share my i hope my ppt is visible right now my ppt is visible I hope my PPT is visible, and uh, I'll start with the presentation. So, uh, regarding the question under discussion today, that's revival of rural economy in times of COVID-19. Before I move on to, into the crux question, I'll just uh, introduce Oruva in a, uh, to a quick run. Uh, as mentioned before, Oruva Indigenous Science and Technology Studies Center is a not-for-profit organization uh, registered under Indian Trust Act. Uh, we got established in the year 1996. and uh, we are located we work from the premises of trikaypeta a small village in wayana district kerala so we function with the larger vision of rural empowerment through sustainable solutions and started in 1996 with broader objectives 
but then as we always say bamboo happened and, and ever since uh, we never uh, like moved out of bamboo through the uh, set of activities urover trust we are an umbrella organization more or less when it comes to bamboo we have uh, bamboo nursery and plantation through which we uh, like means we have more than 50 different species of bamboo available for commercially for commercial sale sale then uh, bamboo interiors is another major vertical where we work upon like means promoting bamboo as a sustainable building material uh, and taking care of uh, the interior demands associated with it bamboo art and installations this is a new vertical altogether like means we are exploring the possibility of bamboo as a material of as a medium of art uh, this is uh, much different from like means what uh, like means we like we what, what we say about craft these are big installations big installations of around 10 to 20 feet long uh, and uh, and height and width like that so bamboo art and installations is a is a new vertical so that's part of our advocacy effort as well like means trying to experiment and explore further possibilities of bamboo then as uh, sir told like livelihood support program or flagship initiative i'll be speaking more about this in the coming slides a livelihood support program live sale products and blinds are the major products associated with live, livelihood support program then trainings and workshops of course uh, our forte 22 years of experience is our major capital so trainings and workshops is another major vertical uh, like means we have like um, huge experience large amount of experience and expertise in and advocacy of course like means we started in the year 1996 when bamboo was like uh, not known to to majority of the population so if efforts constant efforts has been there from the water forever to introduce bamboo into the psych into the mainstream mainstream psych and to, even today we continue that we have a sister concern over uh and it takes care of construction bamboo construction eco-friendly community tourism and bamboo depot three more verticals under or under over coolings in short Urova ecosystem works across nine different sectors in bamboo and strives to develop bamboo as a, uh, and and strives to develop as a bamboo solution center a center of excellence in bamboo this is the larger goal with which we work it's an umbrella organization as i as i mentioned at the beginning so our ultimate goal is to uh, ensure uh, like the establishment of a, of a center of excellence in bamboo moving on to the question the, the core question under discussion today rejuvenating rural economy under covid-19 through bamboo so rather than moving into the theory of that i would um, i would be happy to focus on a case study of our livelihood support program so since i did mention about the campaign which we are running at the moment that's called as green kids campaign so i'll just take the case of green kids campaign to to see how we are trying to revive uh, the beneficiaries the rural beneficiaries associated with them as part of this livelihood support program so about livelihood support program uh, through livelihood support, support program, we support more than 100 art artisans and majority of them, like means, as I mentioned, three capital is a, is a village area. Uh, our beneficiaries are marginalized and um, like different set of marginal marginalities are associated with them. Then they are majorly from impoverished backgrounds. So this helped these people to uh, support their families uh, by making bamboo products. This is a core idea of the livelihood support program. Uh, so I'll quickly run through what is a pre-COVID scenario, how COVID impacted, impacted them, and what is a mitigation or revival attempt, or what is a kind of uh, mitigation or revival attempt underway at the moment. Pre-COVID, our major products, our major product line included artifacts, uh, lampshades, and corporate gifting. Uh, and more or less, we uh, catered to a niche market sector with heavy depend on, depend on, dependence on tourism and allied industries. See, uh, 95 percentage of almost 90 to 95 percent of our sales uh, came from tourism industry. So, like the the slowdown has started much before this because, like, means uh, during last two years we had consistent floods here. So the slowdown has st started before this itself. But then once the COVID happened, like it was complete. Uh, the major products. I'll just quickly run through what were the major products. These are this was these were the major products. The lampshades corporate gifting, this is something called a spice box, book of spices, why not has a lot of spices as well. So we try to like mean scatter into, into, into that area as well. Then uh, the green office, bamboo solutions for office needs. These were the major set of products we were making, making uh, in the pre-COVID era to, to call it so. Now, what has happened with the COVID-19 is, it's almost complete wash of our products like almost like, uh, see, there is no, there is no exaggeration in it. It's complete wash of postmarks. Slowdown, as I mentioned, started started long before, but then uh, further acceleration to that slowdown 
started since january because like means in kerala covid cases started reporting from from jan onwards so by march by march second week like there were there were no markets at all more than 100 beneficiaries what happened more than 100 beneficiaries as, as i mentioned like means they were like of the program uh, like they were left without any income or employment and with the current set of products what we make uh, we are expecting the, the uncertainty to loom large even bigger and also to keep them away from employment and income uh, for at least another another six months and to make matters worse like uh, people have started like uh, brilliant artisans uh who could who could be counted right uh, among right among the like means best in the business in the nation they started moving slowly started moving out of the out of the art which they have learned for their art and then we decided to like come up with a mitigation strategy which is how we are like means what has been happening right now that is the green kids campaign it is from the existing product line we completely like revamped uh, our existing product line and introduced something something called green kids definitely considering the sustainability aspect of bamboo like means we introduce a concept called green kits it's a set of sustainable utility products the major motto the major uh, idea was that it should be able to connect with the larger section of the society and three types of kit i'll just show the pictures of that as well one is kitchen kit one is school kit and jewelry kit and pricing like from uh, a very expensive product set we came down to like means see we remodeled our, our designs we remodeled our, our our like means production strategies to come down to rupees 100 this is a school kit i'm mentioning about uh, this is bamboo pen then there is calligraphy pen then there is bookmark keychain and a go green badge with the message that there is no planet b considering the impact of bamboo on uh, positive impact of ba bamboo on climate change this is a jewelry kit with a very simple chain a, a hair stick and a bangle and this is a kitchen kit a very utility stuff uh, with a set of kitchen equipments not going into the into the details of that now our lessons from this or like means how we manage to do this is the question like means how or like means what is the strategy we employed is the question first one is product innovation and design definitely product innovation and design so uh, like there was uh, mentioning about rich man's timber and poor man's timber the capacity of bamboo is like we can actually cater to all diverse applications with the wide applications we could actually like means cater to differing like means different requirements so what we did is we took around 50 days in fact like means our design team comprising of five uh, like really good master uh, designers or master craftsmen master trainers they worked for almost 45 to 50 days overnight to bring the cost to this level uh, and like uh, different techniques also to bring down the cost to to this level with the currently available raw material as well raw material was also is also a major consideration con considering like the lockdown extension and stuff like that so uh, like uh, had did a lot of brainstorming on that friend product innovation second one process reorganization and skill development right now like means we have revamped all the units we have reorganized the units and skill development trainings have started like means they are new to these products so they don't know these products so and this line of production also there it is new to them so what what is happening is the trainings have started uh, three days back uh, and slowly we are integrating one by one units back into it so they are given skill development training at least for at least for 10 to 15 around, around 10 days is what we plan for a particular unit for a particular individual so by that time they would be integrated into this production line and third one, of course, is market integration. See, market integration is the is arguably the most important part because we had to do all this because markets got washed off. And we are running a full throttle campaign under the banner Green Kids campaign with full focus on online. Earlier, like means we barely had any online presence. Now we have a website, we have the Insta FB, all online means we are promoting it. And under the banner Green Kids campaign, we are hoping to get every, every, every individual like associated with Urobo back to employment by July 6th. On the, other, on the other front, all tourism-related industries in, in Vienna, they are saying that like, let's not uh, talk about business until October. On that front, we are trying to get our, I mean, our, get our beneficiaries back on employment by July 6. So key takeaways. I'll come back to the major lessons from this. As I mentioned, bamboo with its wide application always give you the possibility for cost correction. It's like, like it's from, cried, from cradle to coffin, everything can be made in bamboo. This is, a, this is a, the saying goes like that. So it's not about bamboo assets. When we speak about regeneration or renewal of, sorry, revival of rural, uh, like uh, regeneration of rural economy, uh, bamboo is here. If bamboo is there, like raw material definitely is the most important component. Once bamboo is there, the possibilities are immense. What you need is the right technology and innovation. Once raw material is available, the right technology and innovation, right skill set, right skill set. We could actually do this change of 
uh, like means uh, shift our gears because like means we had uh, like uh, supremely talented and gifted uh, artisans uh, who are associating with us then uh, market knowledge what sells and mark what not like means a, a demand driven uh, market market very organization in the post covid scenario and since we are discussing about covid and post covid scenario one major point i would want to add you add is the organization it's not about as a, a company or an organization as such, whether you're an individual or whether you're not you're an, an organization you need to be organized within within yourself a set of buildings is not essentially an organization an individual on the other hand can be an organization so this discipline and organized way of working also and since efficiency is going to be a major parameter in the in the, in the, in the coming days and cost effectiveness is also going to be a major parameter uh, for a larger sector of the community when we speak about uh, like large scale actions that would actually contribute to the cost of rural empowerment or uh, like rural economy uh, organization our discipline is also is also going to play a very key role that's what our impression is and the, this sentence you don't necessarily sell masks or uh, you don't necessarily need to sell masks or pp kits for a living the statement actually comes from one of my, one of our interactions with certain agencies we were actually thinking about way outs uh, how to come out of uh, the covid scenario considering the number of beneficiaries we cater to and everyone was telling us that like see right now there is no market for bamboo products forget about doing bamboo forget about considering bamboo push on to pp kits push on to mask and we have and they have given us like means a lot of examples from development sector narrative itself where people have started selling mask and like means making pp kits the units so um, our our impression and our understanding is is this that like means if we got the right technology and innovation we got the right sort of skill set which need to be consistently improved and consistently like means uh, polished further market knowledge as well as uh, an organized way of working out uh, there are a lot of artisans are also examples of artisans who are actually doing really good during this uh, uh, lockdown period like during this covid period so bamboo can definitely help you to earn your living now one more point regarding like since we are discussing the larger concept of um, like rural uh, empowerment and rural development it's i guess that like means our experience is worth mentioning here so our beneficiaries as, as i mentioned are rural women from impoverished backgrounds like a lot of them are single mothers a lot of them are like uh, separated uh, so this is their majority of them depend on this as their single source of uh, only source of income for that reason and we set up all these units as an implementing agency whatever as you see today was initially not designed i should say that not designed to take into the marketing aspect of things we enter into all these like setting up of units as an implementing agency of different government programs during the 2000s and even 2020 like means the majority of the units were set through spurti and msme program and even during 2020 we continue to handhold the the units under under the project or until not the project under the program livelihood support uh, so and we provide forward backward linkages we have dependent units solely dependent on us we have like a partially dependent units and we have independent units but the sad reality is very few of them could become themselves independent uh, or maybe it's not a sad reality it is a reality the reality is very few of them could become independent conclusion from our experience is this only few of them can become independent and larger group and larger impact needs uh, continuous support and as, and as susan sir has mentioned it's not uh, just about training it's all about an integrated approach to ensure uh, and, and ensure changes happening having said that i'll just quickly move on to the major Trainings. I did mention trainings and workshops is the major forte. Uh, is our major forte the major programs uh, we conduct? Uh, this is an overview of the programs uh, we do here. So introduction to bamboo processing and treatment. This is basically about the very base uh, activities related to bamboo, the raw material side of things, how to process it, how to do the treatment, and and all such details are included in this. It's a very short program, hardly three days. You can actually uh, learn the art of this. Introduction to entrepreneurship in bamboo. This is a com comparatively newer program. Um, like um, impact, like COVID has impacted on on its loans. So we basically want uh, want people to be aware about what are the bottlenecks, what are the challenges in the way ahead uh, considering our like strong history of 25 years uh, then basic skill development and design transfer programs in bamboo products making so this is about about uh, unit setting so uh, like these are us usually 10 to 30 days program 
uh, like it focus on five or six products usually, or at the max uh, five, like means five to ten products uh, for an like means basic skill development for a group who are, who do, who doesn't have any previous exposure in bamboo. They can be trained into the into the art of product making uh, with like in around eight to ten designs over a period of uh, ten to thirty days. This is the basic skill development and design transfer programs in bamboo product making. Next one is skill upgradation workshops, follow up trainings. This is arguably like means if we are setting up a unit, this is very key as far as the products are concerned. Uh, skill upgradation workshops, uh, then product and design development workshops. So this is about a product like means if you have a design, we can actually make it into the product. That means we can actually convert it into bamboo. Uh, considering bamboo is a very challenging material for, for beginners to, be, to start with. So that is one way of doing it. Then second one is design development workshop. So if you have a concept and you want to develop it into a design, we can actually we also take up that as a as an area of activity. The last one is arguably the most important uh, one of the and most uh, important and complete one of the of the programs we offer. So this is conferency program to develop resource person for from for setting up of units. So it's from harvesting to final finishing of of what we offer, uh, like means we train them from harvesting. So it includes almost all facets of what, what has been discussed above, all the, all the other programs. So it is usually a two to three months uh, program. And then through this program, we try to develop like means resource persons. So basically, we take at least 10 people together for this. Um, even one person can come if that person is so interested. But then like this uh, uh, spans over a period of two to three months. This is what this program is all about. A few examples of the recently concluded programs. This is our UN, like means we are associated as Sri Lanka. So it consider it, it like the Pixar from the, the Sri Lankan program. Uh, it is not just a skill development program. We are developing the nursery and plantation manuals for them. Uh, we are developing the manual for training as well. So basically, a set of beneficiaries are identified by UNIDO. And uh, we are helping to, like, this is the last phase of the project, in fact, like, we are helping to set up the bamboo industry uh, of Sri Lanka. Uh, this is actually a previous, like, an association we had a couple of years back. This is basically for the Sindhudurg region. Uh, uh, like, means we have, we got around, uh, we, uh, like, means we had an association with MSSIDC. So, like, this is the program we mentioned that is the Conferency Master's, Master Craftsman Development Program, uh, which happened for a period of three months. So, this is a certificate distribution features. This is another one. Max Roy is working, making workshop. This is from IAC. This association is with IAC, IAC Bangalore, and the Institute of Science Bangalore, and HNC Rao Science City. Uh, project of um, Karnataka State uh, Science Council. Uh, this particular project is about like means the, like means they had the designs in paper, and we helped to convert it into bamboo. So this is what design transfer like sorry design uh, conversion workshop is all about. So in other cases we were we had our own designs which we try to transfer, but here we like means they came up with the design and we and in paper and we converted it into bamboo. So this is what these are the kind of programs we offer to uh, the under the belt of trainings and workshops. So I'll just quickly conclude with what I have mentioned in the beginning. Uh, uh, skill development trainings can only be the can only be the beginning beginning of a very very long journey. Sushant sir has, has rightly mentioned it. So it's an integrated approach with equal focus on raw material, with equal focus on product innovation, skill set, and market linkages is what a successful model can be all about. When I speak about market linkages, I just want to, to stress the point that a demand-driven market approach is very, very key and very important in the way forward. Right? And with all my presentations in, in Bamboo, I conclude with this word, woods are lovely, dark and deep, and miles to go before we sleep, miles to go before we sleep. Thanks a lot. And this is my uh, contact and contact address if anyone wants to connect with us and, and take this further forward. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tony, <clears throat> for letting us know about the activities of your organization. And then uh, uh, for taking us through about uh, pre-COVID, COVID impact, and how you are doing the rejuvenation. And then what I liked about was the crane gates, you know, kitchen gates, school, jewelry gates, all those things. Now, uh, if we have not, uh, if there's any question from the participant, we are willing to give the time to you. Any question, please? Sure, sure.
Okay. If there's no question, then uh, let us go through uh, to the next speaker, Mr. Rahul Patil. Uh, let me introduce him to you. Mr. Rahul Patil is a director, Bambu Research and Training Center, Chandrapur, Governor, Maharashtra. He is, uh, he belongs to Maharashtra cadre of Indian Forest Service. And just before the, uh, the seminar, he told me that he belongs to the uh, 2014 batch. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So now at present, he is the director at Bamboo and Research uh, Training Center. Basically, he is a mechanical engineer and his area of interest is forest and environment. Bamboo Research and Training Center Change Pali is an autonomous institute by a Maharashtra Forest Department established in uh, December 2015 to enhance the skills of bamboo artisans by providing latest technology and traits and thereby providing better livelihood opportunities in the field of bamboo. Currently, BRTC provides a certificate course, course of uh, 70 days and also a two-year diploma course in bamboo technology. Uh, Mr. Badil, over to you. Yes, yes sir. sir. Good evening, sir, and good evening all. Actually, uh, uh, sir has already given the brief introduction about my uh, post and my uh, work profile. So I would like to share my presentation also. Right now, uh, I am working as a director of Bamboo Research and Training Center. Uh, which uh, is it visible? Hello, 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 hello. For me, you are audible. For me, you are audible. Sir, uh, is it visible? My presentation is visible. It is visible now. It is visible now. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, actually, Bamboo Research and Training uh, Center, as sir told, it is an autonomous organization of Maharashtra Forest Department, and it is basically working for the uh, training, uh, training in the field of bamboo skill development, and also giving the self-employment opportunities to the uh, rural uh, people of the Maharashtra. And uh, as in the COVID-19 scenario, the economy has uh, in a bad shape so uh, bamboo can be looked after as a uh, major key factor or key role it can play a key role in regeneration of rural economy so uh, this bamboo research and training center is basically uh, situated in chandrapur district in chichpali near in a vidarbha region of maharashtra and its main vision is to provide training and skill development to the rural youth as well as self-help group women so uh, and uh, also with respect to this uh, training center i'd like to uh, show you the main infrastructure we are creating as this is the infrastructure which is uh, uh, which is established uh, which is which will be established in uh, the work has been completed almost 90 percent work has been completed and uh, Sanjeev ji is there, Sanjay, Sanjay Prakash is there, uh, he, sorry, uh, Sanjeev Karpe is there, he is also in, uh, uh, he is also in the part of our project. So this is our infrastructure in which the academic buildings and admin, admin building, exhibition center, and lab, uh, all the labs, hostel, canteen, this is the infrastructure, which is uh, almost the area of the infrastructure is almost 4.99 hectare and this building uh, is wholly made up of uh, bamboo and rammed earth and the design of the building is uh, uh, given by the shift architect company the shift is the shift architect from delhi west architect company and uh, uh, imp the implementing uh, agency is jans bamboo and Sanjeev, Sanjeev, Sanjeev is also associated with Jans Bambu. This is academic building and work is almost uh, completed. But this is the old photograph we are in the presentation. 
दिस इज हॉस्टल बिल्डिंग एडमिन बिल्डिंग द हॉस्टल कैपेसिटी ऑफ आवर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इज ऑलमोस्ट वन ट्वेंटी स्टूडेंट्स एंड द हॉस्टल इज ऑल्सो मेडअप ऑफ रैमड अर्थ एंड बाम्बू एंड दिस इज अ रेसिडेंशियल कॉम्प्लेक्स इन द बी आर टी सी एरिया एज सर टोल्ड रिगार्डिंग द ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम विपिन एंड ऑल्सो सुशांत जी ऑल्सो टोल्ड अबाउट वेरियस डिजाइन मॉडल्स एंड डिजाइन इन द बाम्बू फील्ड so we are running we are we are uh, giving training programs like certificate courses in the basketry in the handicraft furniture and bamboo construction and plantation to harvesting basically uh, our motive is to give the training pro- training to the uh, rural and uh, local people of the maharashtra uh, because uh, bamboo is basically available in vidarbha region and uh, we are giving them training to the uh, chandrapur garchiroli Kondia and uh, uh, Vardha district. Almost uh, more than 2,000 uh, students have been trained, and self-help group women also. So uh, along with along this along with this, the farmer. The basically we are uh, in Maharashtra uh, on the state, nest, under the National Bamboo Mission as well as the State Bamboo Mission. We are carrying out the various plantation programs. and for that plantation programs uh, the fa- we, we we are also tra- giving training to the farmers for uh, how to plant how to harvest and uh, what will be the spacing which species can be planted according to the l- availability of land so this training module is also uh, we are giving to the farmers and the unique course we have started in 2017 uh, diploma in Bam- bamboo technology basically uh, the uh, idea behind this was the middle level managers or the middle line manager should be there in the field of bamboo so that bamboo can be connected to the uh, uh, technology uh, has nid is also working with respect to designs but uh, in the field of implement at the field of implementation with implementation with the rural uh, people we should be middle level managers with this view we have uh, started the diploma in bamboo technology in association with the maharashtra state board of technical education and uh, every year we used to we have a intake capacity of 20 students and uh, mm, uh, we are giving them training we are, we are giving them exposures in the uh, various institutions like nid uh, iit bombay then uh, uh, also bcdi abhinav ji is also there uh, bcdi uh, uh, tripura then uh, i iprti iwst these are the premier institution where we send our students uh, for their uh, for their um, betterment of the future and basically would like to tell you about this course this is all uh, this course is almost uh, 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 we are giving them free tra- free living uh, free hostel facility and also the stipend is also available a uh, 1500 stipend per month is also there and uh, 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 where the lab and the uh, also the uh, practical hands on st- skill is there with the students these are the some photographs of the students and the uh, first year uh, the first batch of diploma was passed out with the 100% placement in uh, from the institution also the main uh, uh, in india we should focus on the livelihood activities or the uh training should be in line with the self employment opportunity should be given so we have started uh, that this program uh, along with our training program we have started uh handicraft unit program that bamboo handicraft unit program in which we have uh, we are giving them uh, we are pro, uh, giving them the self employment opportunities with respect to uh, all the machine with the one common facility center is there with equipped uh, with all the machines all the facilities there so uh, we have established around six common facilities in the chandrapur district as well as uh, in the maharashtra we have established we are establishing 11 uh, uh, common facility st- uh, centers for uh, women as well as uh, uh, rural youth this is the sanjeevni program we are running for the rural uh, self help group uh, uh, women 
विच आर असोसिएटेड विथ महिला आर्थिक विकास मंडळ ऑफ महाराष्ट्र अँड ऑलमोस्ट फिफ्टी मोर दॅन फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड वुमन हॅव बीन ट्रेन अँड इन द लॉकडाऊन ऑल्सो दिस इन द लॉकडाऊन टाईम्स ऑल्सो दे हॅव दे हॅव गिवन वर्क फ्रॉम होम अँड दे आर डुईंग राखीज फॉर दे रक्षाबंधन सो मे बी दिस लॉकडाऊन पिरियड ऑर दिस कोविड नाईन्टीन इट इट दे in this covid 19 period also they will get the benefited they will get benefited from the work from home initiative <clears throat> these are the some common facility centers we have established in chandrapur district also uh, in the vicinity to the uh, jungle areas of the tadobandari tiger reserve we are uh, we are providing training to the uh people adjacent to the this uh, uh, tiger reserve and we have taken that initiative is called as aadhar as well as we have imparted training to the uh, prisoners in chandrapur district and nagpur districts and as we see as we are talking about the regeneration of uh, rural economy we have established uh, pomburna cluster in which uh, agarbatti cluster is we, we have established agarbatti cluster with the buy back guarantee agreement from itc and uh, uh, toothpick unit is also there and uh, which is maharashtra's first toothpick unit uh, out of bamboo these are some women working in the uh, our agarbatti center and almost 300 women have been uh, in uh this agarbatti sector uh, in agarbatti center working also we have tie up with uh, um, universities three universities pune university amravati university and rahuri university and we have set up a studio units stu- studio centers in these universities and design centers in these three universities and which are working on the uh, bamboo designs as well as we have tie up with the engineering college of the pune university with this uh, studio center so that we can get the best design to uh, market of uh, this uh, bamboo setum we have almost around 7 uh, almost 55 species with us connect it he is on the screen we hello bamboo setum we have almost uh, uh, 55 species uh, species with us and which are uh, uh, we uh, with uh, also uh, nurseries available with us for the farmers to get a knowledge of uh, various species as well as the uh, environmental condition for the marketing we have uh, tie up with amazon sale and last year almost 50000 rakis rakis also have been uh, made by this woman and have, have been sold with the amazon sale for the farmers we have <coughs> program called palak mantri bamboo samruddhi abhiyan in which uh, uh, almost 7 5000 7000 farmers have been participated and 5 lakh uh, 55 bamboo saplings uh is given to the farmers and they have planted on their farm land so it will be useful for the agri- our pomburna uh, cluster agarbatti unit basically um, uh, various there are the common facility centers common facility centers available in maharashtra on the private uh, with the private player so for them we have a th- three treatment plants with us as well as uh, uh, procedure and training with respect to the treatment plants we are uh, we are giving them training on the with respect to the treatment plants <clears throat> these are the uh, treatment plants that vpi that carbonization third one is uh, normal natural one also we have developed we have established particle board unit in uh, chandrapur district of uh, in chandrapur district in chichpalli and our future project with respect to uh, uh, 
covid 19 after covid 19 we are focusing on this projects so that the uh, rural um, economy can be regenerated in the maharashtra and it will be benefited it will be beneficial for our indian economy too thank you very much and rahul that's it yes sir that's yes true? sir ah. yes sir ah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rahul. Yes, sir. Uh, any thank questions? You. Any questions from the participants as well as the panelists? I have a question, Rahul. Sir, sir. Uh, you said uh, you know in the first batch, how many students were there, and then how uh, you know you said hundred uh, uh, percent all of them got placements. Where yes, have sir. they been? Sir, fourteen students have been enrolled in the first batch, mm -hmm. and out of that, we have three students with us in the BRTC area, in the BRTC unit. Then uh, uh, almost seven students were uh, were employed by uh, employed by uh, two nurseries, the tissue culture nurseries. One is from uh, MP Bhopal, MP. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Reva Flora in the uh, Reva Flora Nursery, and second one is uh, uh, Mr. Bharti's Nursery. So seven students have been placed in uh, these two places, and uh, and remaining four have been placed with uh, Woodpecker that uh, Mr. Par with Parmesh Parmeshwar Iyer. These fourteen students have been placed with these four institutes, or these four companies. We can say. Uh, how many uh, students you are going to train this year? So twenty students we are going to train this year. How many and students? You Twelve. Twenty. Twenty students we are going to train this year, and uh, oh. almost procedure uh, procedure for enrollment have been started from fifteenth of June. So hmm. uh, after twelfth result out, will be uh, uh, um, the admission will be open for the students. Okay. What is the uh, qualification for joining? Sir, uh, the Qualification is 12th pass. It previously it was for 10th pass. Then we have uh, uh, changed the qualification criteria to the 12th pass. And uh, also we have skill test and aptitude test for the students to get uh, enrolled in the procedure. 60% weightage is given for the uh, skill test and aptitude test, and 40% weightage is given for the 12th pass uh, marks. Okay. And then uh, the medium of teaching is in Marathi. Uh, in the both languages, sir, uh, Marathi as well as English. Okay. okay. And thank answer you. right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rahul. Uh, sir. <clears throat> mm. Let's move on to the next uh, speaker, Dr. Abhinav Kant. He, he uh, let me give him. A, uh, let me give a short profile about uh, Abhinav, Dr. Abhinav. He is at present working in the bamboo sector from 2004 onwards, and an experience of more than four, uh, 16 years in bamboo research and design, uh, propagation, primary and secondary processing, design and product development, skill and capacity development, extension and education. He has uh, developed and successfully implemented various trainings, training models, modules in uh, bamboo he is also associated in conducting one year BG diploma course on bamboo cultivation and resource utilization. Over to you, Dr. Abhinav. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, uh, I am Abhinav Kant, working for Bamboo and Cane Development Institute. And this is the uh, oldest institute working in bamboo and cane uh, sector, established in 1974. So it has a history of 46 years. Uh, so the institute is uh, working mainly for the skill development uh, activity. And uh, I am sharing my screen. Uh, can everybody see? Is my screen visible? Yeah, yeah, it is visible. Yes. Okay, but I'm not able to see my screen. Okay. Yeah. So uh, 
this is a map india i'm just showing in this slide that what is the intervention of uh, bcdi uh, we in last uh, uh, 46 years the institute has trained from north to south east to west and uh, uh, the heritage of this institute is if we go anywhere in any state of the country we get alumni pass out student from bcdi and uh, previously there was the training course is was of 6 months it means in a year we were able to have only two batches so uh, like now this is a digital time digital era so everybody needs uh, everything in a short duration so there is a great demand that uh, the this training time period uh, we can Uh, reduce the time period of these training program and uh, right now we have training module which is of uh, one month and 45 days uh, skill development training program so now this slide can you see uh, my this slide uh, bamboo bcdi heritage and national award hello 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 yes yes hello yes yeah, we yeah. can yeah so you are audible now yeah can you say? yes yes bcdi can you say? we can see yeah. that uh, your presentation also yes okay uh, the problem is my connection is slow so uh, you just update me if you are not able to observe the slide so yes, this please. is uh, this is a bcdi heritage it says that uh, uh, the highest award in handicraft sector is president award and maximum president award in bamboo sector is in tripura and among them we our heritage is about 14 artisans they are pass out trainees of uh, different batches from bcdi so now uh, we all are uh, talking about uh, post covid 19 even though we our country has uh, some other issues like uh we are the youngest country in the world and uh, another second person will be less than 29 year old so again we have to create a lot of opportunities and we cannot create uh, that much of jobs so un under that condition we have to have uh, create some entrepreneurship activity or some uh, product development activity where people can get absorbed so bamboo is a very very good prospect uh, where we can uh, uh, provide opportunity to to our young uh, generation so now this is a slide which is basically showing a bamboo uh, bamboo groove can you see this bamboo groove yes yeah so this bamboo groove uh, is basically nowadays uh, due to many reason now uh we have a anti china sentiment and so all those things but uh, this is a bamboo from china and uh, this is the quality what they have if, but if we want to bring this bamboo and grow in our ag agro climatic zone it is not possible so now we have to look towards our local resources and we have to work accordingly uh these are our uh, bamboo resources in india uh, we in each and every state we have our specific bamboo the species richness of northeast is so high that within the states we have variations so we have to find out the bamboo which is right for our industrial purpose in our handicraft purpose so definitely we have parallel bamboo as compared to china chinese bamboo so that we have to find it out and uh, whenever we are going for any skill development activity we always focus first what are the resources of those state what type of resources the artisan is going to be get uh, when they are going back to their uh, native place so this is our skilling india uh, activity dr avina so, you have to make a yes. full screen uh, i have to make it a full, full screen. screen okay yeah this is fine yeah yeah okay yeah now i can also uh, see okay so
uh, skilling india right now uh, we have following five modules looking towards the skill set uh, artisan need and each uh, skill module have a different skill set so i'm just uh, giving you a brief introduction of these skill set first is bamboo furniture making like uh, uh, in this bamboo furniture making we are using a round bamboo a whole bamboo uh, for making furniture then there is a, a very important thing that we can straight our bamboo for making a uniform furniture product or either according to the design element we can bend our bamboo so this is uh, a beauty of bamboo that we can straight it up and if there is a requirement of certain bands we can do that now these are the design sheets uh, so in that uh, training program these are these types of design sheets are there so these artisans learn how to read those design sheets how to select that raw material from which part of bamboo because bamboo is a very heterogeneous material uh, there is a great variation within the species and there is a variation uh, among a single species like from bottom to top there is a great variation so what type of material we have to use that this is very important and uh, after uh, selection there is again joints joints is a very important thing where what type of glue what type of joint we have to use that, uh, this is being taught uh, during that training program so this is about bamboo like uh, what type of uh, joint they need uh, they we cannot put nails we have to put bamboo uh, dowels these are the basic things uh, which has been taught uh, during those training program then finishing is the most important part Fortunate, uh, unfortunately or uh, fortunately like uh, we miss this uh, uh, finishing part and uh, we avoid this finishing part but this is the most important part in bamboo uh, which can definitely give a, a high price in the market so uh, this is a, a slide showing about a furniture product the detailed drawing and uh, its uh, different views and these are the products which are in the niche market and even in the design workshops developed uh, in this uh, training program in different training program the most important part of training program is whenever we are going for any product it should be identical so uh, the thing is focusing on a product uniform production so what type of jigs and uh, frames we have to use and these are the products developed by the trainees raw hand when they came to my uh, institute they uh, have not done anything in uh, skill development and product development activity and believe me this uh, one month training is very less uh, for getting a very uh, good skill so these are developed by this um, these trainees uh, which is nearly uniform these are again uh, sofa sets uh, just showing about uh just to show that uh what type of uni uniformity is acceptable now this is a very uh, fantastic uh, uh slide where we are showing the bendability of bamboo uh, this is a 100% bamboo made collection where the uh, arcs are also made up of 100% bamboo and uh, this shows the strength without any compromise in bamboo now putting up of prophylactic color treatment it also uh, provide a different uh, market opportunity and these are the uh, uh, products uh, de uh, developed uh, new uh, products uh, developed for the market this is again a, a stool the maximum issue is of uh, transportation so in this stool we have reduced the volume uh, the air space this is a knock down which can uh, which can be a flat pack and there is a how to assemble this do it yourself type of uh, paper and uh, a user can assemble this product at their place now coming to the uh, second module is bamboo basketry for this we need a specific type of bamboo and then uh, there are dip, uh, we can play with color and coloring is a very important uh, character in basketry thing where we can use organic color natural color as well as chemical color it all depends on the product cost and what market uh, can pay definitely organic uh, products requires uh, a higher cost so this is a, a process 
sliver making is the most important thing in any weaving type of a skill so the uh, getting this skill itself uh, requires 15 days to just to uh, sit on the uh, platform and just practicing uh, uh, to take out sliver from dao and th this is a very important part uh, for any weaving thing then there is a coloring dyeing and then how to use molds to make uniform uh, basket things important thing is different colors and different weaving pattern can give a different type of product range and these are the uh, few of the patterns and colors combinations uh, in this thing and we can use to make different type of baskets there are some uh, already existing basket and these are some contemporary baskets even in basketry we can use those basket as for lamp shades and other things so weaving technique is the most important thing these are again uh, different type of uh, weave products uh, weaving skills develop after skill development there is a design and product development activity so these are the outcome of those design and product development activity now this is a turning third module turning module this is a very interesting thing where we are honoring the nature's design of bamboo bamboo is hollow from inside so we can use this hollowness and uh, we can make product where we need that, that hollowness so here in tripura this bamboo turning product is traditionally being practiced for many years but no such type of training was available so we have uh, developed this module in 2013 and later on this module is a very uh, acceptable uh, module with various agencies and people are sending uh, uh, participants and trainees for getting this module we are a simple turning machine which will uh, which can cost about 30 35000 and they can purchase at their uh, uh, at their place and they can start uh, doing that production so this is uh, we can make flower vase and even this turning technique can also be uh, additional skill in furniture products so these are some of the uh, turning product flower vase now this is a uh, fourth module which is of jewelry thing this is a, a jewelry thing their raw material requirement is very less but the specification of raw material is very important we have redefined this uh, module in two major category one is the weaved jewelry which requires a very high skill to take out very fine sliver and there is again an integration of material like bamboo and thread in that so these are you can see these are miniature baskets we call it as jhumka and we can have different type of options so these are the de uh, jewelries developed in 2014 onwards uh, uh, in our institute and later on if we have if the artisan or the trainee do not have that high skill of taking out sliver they can use that bamboo uh, surface or bamboo wall for taking out different motifs by using this simple jigsaw machine so these are different motifs and they we can put the earrings pins for making earrings and uh, again this is again we can use that bamboo branches for making uh, hanging jewelry we can use bamboo as it is we can take out different motifs assemble it with uh, various other material like glass bead uh, wooden bead and other materials synthetic material bead metal beads and we can have different types of combinations so these are some of the uh, jewelry products like jhumkas with different color options these are different color options uh, these are bangles having bamboo as well as a fusion of thread jute silk different type of material <clears throat> now the fifth material uh, fifth module is bamboo utility product or a, where we are using processed material this is a very important thing whenever we are talking about uh, mass scale production if everything is by handmade then there is a issue in mass production so we need processed material so how can we use that processed material like either we can use bamboo stake or bamboo sliver or bamboo slat so these three commodities or three three uh, processed material can be used for making value product these are the primary processing machines uh, and we are using it these machines for taking out process material this is a splitter and then we use to make this rectangular splits this split can have two different uh, dimensions one we can use it for industrial purpose and another we can use it for uh, handicraft sector where we can supply these splits to the rural uh, artisans where they can use it for production activity assembly activity these are the simple tools and power operated tools which are going to be used uh, by the uh, production unit 
the, if we are supplying those slats, there is no need to have install any type of big machinery. These simple hand tools can work very good. Now the intervention, uh, what is required in this thing is uh, if we have to compete uh, with international standard, then we have to uh, scale up our production. So supply of treated and processed material is very important. And our price competitiveness is again an important thing where uh, acceptable finish and a timely delivery is very important. Uh, if there is a big order, then we have the capacity to develop that thing. Innovation is always required and this is a continuous process uh, which will always be there. Value enhancement like prophylactic treatment, coloring can also bring uh, various uh, variation in the product. And uh, product specific scale up training is very important. Like uh, if uh, this, uh, uh, like if we have one product or a basket, how can we produce that in a scale up activity with a uniform production and a time uh, timely delivery and an acceptable finish? So we have to set up production unit uh, where we can produce zero defect and zero effect product. This is a laptop stand where we are using process material slat, and this is the simplest product where the process material is assembled and a high-end product. This is a foldable stand. We can use it and carry this product and a very functional product. This is a tray. These are the steps. And this drawing can show various steps how to assemble this. So this is a, 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 a artisan or a cluster who have the basic skill or carpentry skill can have this uh, drawing and they can start producing these, active, uh, these products. These are uh, placemats then using those uh, splits for making frames and uh, these things. Again, a loom mat can also be utilized and uh, a fusion of bamboo slat to make uh, these types of uh, laundry basket and high-end product. This is a technology dissemination and extension. Like this, we are using bamboo slats and mat-based product to make new product which we can produce in a uniform uh, manner. These are a small order of like 25, uh, 40, 50 uh, baskets. These are uniform baskets and uh, having a uniform finish. Again, we can use those slats for making some illumination. This is a illumination or lighting and shade is the highest selling product in handicraft sector. So we should focus on these things. Uh, this is again a pedestal lamp. Now bamboo mat board, uh, what the technology developed by Apriti, this mat board can also be used for making small uh, products like uh, Urvu told that about sp spices box. This, that is a very important thing. Uh, very good product. Again, we can make uh, these simple products and we call it as the uh, Napo Kato Jodo product, where we have to measure it, cut it, and fix it. Uh, these are again uh, 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 tabletop uh, office utility product, where we have A4 file and then card, visiting card, pan stand and uh, photo frame, different activities, uh, different products are there and we can package it in a simple box. So again, we can use those slats or making a rural single layer product. This is a rural board. This uh, does not require a, a machine. This is a rural board there. They can uh, make this single layer board at their uh, place and make these uh, simple uh, innovative bamboo products. Again, we have a, a bamboo uh, design uh, activity where we uh, go to the cluster, they find out the traditional craft and we can, this is a Nishi, bas Nishi basket. There is just, we, are, we have applied this Nishi basket to a lamp. This is a just uh, using the same skill and same product and a different application. Now, this is a, a very good uh, successful model, this uh, bamboo uh, mobile amplifier. We got a, uh, uh, order of 9,000 pieces uh, like two, three years back and uh, nobody in the cluster and uh, artisan level, they are not able to uh, execute this product because to develop that 9,000 9, product, we need a, ton, a huge amount of raw material that to process. Like uh, if I start that processing uh, day one, then again 20 by 30 days requires to completely dry that material and treat that material. So uh, that is very important that uh, we should have a uh, raw material bank or raw material uh, uh, at our store so that if there is any order we can uh, execute that thing. So this order was executed in three months with a uh, hundred pieces one, uh, one, uh, one day production estimate. Now this is a bamboo bottle. Uh, nowadays we are uh, much heard about bamboo bottle 
and uh, if we are using bamboo as it is for making uh, using and uh, filling that bam uh, bamboo uh, for, uh, filling that water in that bamboo there is a huge uh, problem of contamination fungal infection so this is a 100% hygienic and leak proof bottle uh, and this was developed uh, by us uh, and uh, uh, this is being uh, presented by our honorable uh, chief minister to the honorable home minister of india and uh, they have appreciated this uh, product uh, and uh, this product can be mass scaled in a uh, cluster uh, level now there is we call it as local and vocal and uh, uh, we have a product category which is basically for the state like this is a, a, a tripureshwari temple which is a, a, a very most important temple in tripura uh, one of the shakti peed of uh, in india and uh, we have made a model of that thing and this uh, model is very much acceptable with the people local people and if somebody coming from outside and uh, going back from tripura they can have this heritage now these process uh, this uh, we we do have a processing facility and we can have a training module how to use these machines how to process that material in a acceptable uh, finish and uh, we have a industrial tie up like if any investor want to invest in making bamboo board uh, so they do not have to uh, right uh, right through they have, do not have to make uh, that investment they can bring their raw material to our place and we can definitely uh, develop their prototype and they, those prototype can uh, further be worked out uh, with i care for uh, due diligence these boards can further be used for making value addition like uh, contemporary uh, product furniture product these boards uh blue boards can also be used for making mementos these are some of the mementos now this is ag again like we are talking about bamboo products so edible is edible a character of bamboo is very much uh, acceptable and uh, very bamboo is a very uh, good cuisine in northeastern area where we have a good bamboo production in uh, monsoon time so these are few of the dishes but we cannot uh, increase the shelf life of this bamboo so how we can make some products which have a higher shelf life so these are bamboo pickles where we are using uh, common pickling techniques and uh, giving different uh, tastes or different um, uh, flavoring agents and uh, making bamboo pickle uh, and there is a increased shelf life and again recently we have already also introduced bamboo cookies these cookies are bamboo shoot pulp and has a great uh, fiber content nutritional value and bamboo is organic uh, as we know so uh, this uh, bamboo cookie is also a very good product for increasing the shelf life as well as the nutritional property of cookies we do have a uh, we are running a post graduate diploma course uh, in collaboration with tripura university we are from bamboo propagation diversity to uh, design and product development and how to process those machines how to uh, handle those machines is that part as uh, padil saab told earlier that uh, we are also having a uh, uh, mou with uh, brtc where the students are coming to our place for one month and we are uh, uh, they are getting exposure on bamboo bamboo harvesting then how to propagate those things processing like uh, butchery method rural based methods as well as industrial method of treatment processing machine these are a uh, few of the glimpses of those uh, training program they are also going through that how to make bamboo charcoal in a rural based setup and these are the <coughs> edible things now this is again uh, like we our training program the uh, good thing is all training program is uh, are in residential mode so uh right from the morning till in the evening and night we are controlling those things giving our input uh late in, uh, till that night and uh that is uh, where we are teaching more things in a less time duration again like we are using the bamboo for making bamboo shade house uh under national bamboo mission we are promoting this bamboo to make uh, uh bamboo nursery and uh, when we talk about training we have short short term we, these are of 5 days to 10 days and these are skill module which is of uh, uh, one month and 45 days module so we have these different uh, training modules and we have different association with different organizations uh, uh, this is my presentation 
about uh, BCDI and its activity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abhinav, for taking us through the inside about your Bamboo and Can Development Institute, Agatala, Tripura. Uh, we have uh, actually short of time, so I think we should go over to the next uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Sanjeev, Sanjeev Karbe. Sanjeev Karbe, let me just give him uh, give a short profile about him. Sanjeev Karbi is a director, Conback, uh, Sindhudurg, Maharashtra. Sanjeev is a qualified uh, electrical engineer and has been associated with bamboo industry for the last 16 years and pioneered the work in setting up bamboo-based enterprise in rural India. Uh, due to lack of time, I will not uh, give a long uh, profile about him. He is also a director with Center for Bamboo Resource and Technology CPART and also um, uh, implemented Bamboo Livelihood Business Enterprise Project for development of primitive tribal groups of South Gujarat for Corona of Ma uh, Gujarat. Now I give time to Sanjeev, please. Thank you very much, sir. Good evening to everybody. Conbag is based in Kudal, which is Sindhu district of Maharashtra right on the border of Goa and Karnataka, uh, established in 2004. Uh, we do conduct various type of training, training for artisans, training for architect students, uh, even a product specific training, training for engineers and builders, etc. So we started in 2004, uh, when initially only older ladies used to come for a training. Uh, our trainer was from Philippine, Philippines and uh, with the with the whatever older ladies are available, we started giving training uh, for a craft. First, what we did is uh, we upgrade their skill to do weaving and uh, and we taught them to make a better quality mats. And then we uh, this type of mats is being used by the tourism industry for interiors for for making uh, different type of uh, uh, screens uh, even for making ceilings and ultimately uh, these type of mats is being used as a skin for a for a furniture uh, like wardrobe like item then we taught uh, th these older ladies to make a nice quality baskets of a different size and and then we understood to to have a, a uniform quality you need to use jigs and molds we took support from iit bombay and with the help of iit bombay uh, jigs and molds are designed to make a product of a uniform shape and size and slowly our artisan learned how to make how to make use of a different type of molds and then we started uh, making production using that type of a uh, uh, jigs and mold then we tried even exposing our artisan directly to the client through different type of exhibition and and then our artisan started making this type of products and this type of product is well accepted by the market. So we started our uh, craft training institute uh, center at Kudal and introduced a uh, different product uh, uh, for a training as well as for producing uh, in a corporate gift segment. Uh, then we started uh, making mementos out of bamboo for different uh, designs then slowly started making lightings uh, in bamboo uh, that also got good response from the from the market uh, then we got the opportunity to train artisan from mizoram it is a european union funded project where we are supposed to train artisans from uh, five states of uh, northeast uh, uh, they are traditional good skilled artisan but we have been asked to train them these artisans come to Kudar in a batches and we train them uh, for different type of products. 
we started with the bamboo furniture uh, training uh, we trained initially local manpower using uh, with technical support from technical university delft netherland uh, we started one bamboo furniture training uh, unit and and uh, this type of product being taught in this type of a training program uh, keeping in mind the test of uh, urban uh, crowd uh, we we have designed our product uh, with a different color combination with the different material like a jute cushion and uh, it gives a good response you find good response for this type of product uh, from the market uh, then we got opportunity to uh, to set up a project for lavasa at lavasa city we trained local manpower and set up a unit there uh, we got one more project at Palgar from Tribal Development Department. Uh, we also trained tribal uh, youths from that area. We got opportunity to train uh, a tribal artisan from Jhadol in Rajasthan. Uh, then we got a chance to train a tribal artisan uh, primitive tribes from uh, Gujarat at Tapi. Uh, under uh, Sark Development Fund for project we got a chance to train uh, different uh, artisans from Bhutan uh, we do conduct training uh, for uh, uh, for architecture students also uh, our architecture uh, students uh, get a three day or one day training program at our institute hands-on training, model making, everything is included in this. And uh, uh, many architecture students have been already trained by us uh, to make this type of product and, and getting uh, this type of products are getting good response from the market. Uh, bamboo construction training is also given by our organization and, and you can make aesthetically beautiful bamboo structures which are durable with this type of training you can make a bigger structure like this these are the pictures of a structure done by us at different locations this is at Maldives uh, at Itapushi uh, island for water of Austria this is at Chandrapur uh, we make a bamboo components uh, a prefab bamboo components and this type of uh, uh, erection on site is done by us so thank you very much thank you uh, uh sanjeev thank you very much for uh, giving us a very short and comprehensive uh, presentation uh now let's go to the question and answer uh, session. We have got just a couple of questions. So panelists can answer those questions. Just a minute, give me a minute. This question is from uh, Ajit Dathri, Osle, Gulabur, Maharashtra. The bamboo plantation in large areas need bank finance. The cultivators or investors are getting poor response from bankers. Sanjeev. Sir, uh, I will answer this. Okay. Uh, so NABAD has come up with the uh, with the training program for our bankers, okay. and uh, and NABAD is now setting up a necessary guideline for uh, uh, funding uh, bamboo plantations, and uh, this guideline has just now come. So I am very sure now the banker will have different type of uh, approach. At the same time. Uh, Training for bankers are also being arranged. The government of Maharashtra's Bamboo Development Board is also working in that direction. And I'm very sure this type of problem will be solved soon. 
Thank you. I hope that satisfies uh, Mr. Bosley. Okay, another question is, uh, bottle bombo is food grade safe? That is the question from Dr. Mr. Rani. Dr. Dr. Abhinav yeah. should answer it. Yeah, yeah, yes. definitely. Uh, yes, this is 100% food grade uh, because we have put a uh, inner coating or inner lining of, uh, we can put glass also and we can put uh, metal also. Metal, we can have different option like steel and even for health issue, we can also put copper. Thank you. The third and final question is, oh, uh, Sanjay, this is from Sanjay Singh. Uh, for uh, Nagar, UP. How can design help bamboo craftsman craftsmanship to bamboo machine craft? This is the question. So, Anybody? Uh, I think uh, Abhinavji, BCDI, and other institute also giving training to the uh, people to use how uh, use of machine along with the craft. Now question arises that if you use uh, machine only, then uh, there will not be scope for any craftsman. So we need to find uh, out a fine balance between use of machine and use of craftsman. And uh, if you want to get uh, the tax uh, concession for, for particularly craft handicrafts, then uh, the definition of handicraft is you should not be using any power tool also. So we need to keep that in mind that uh, yes, we can definitely use machine, but uh, but uh, then the fine balance has to be kept in. I think uh, Tony should uh, also respond to this. Please. Uh, yeah, I do completely agree with what uh, Sanjeevji has told. Uh, like uh, considering the livelihood aspect of, uh, of bamboo, potential of bamboo and also the challenges of the material there should be a fine balance between the traditional ways in which we address this question as well as the modern opportunities available to like uh, scale up uh, and cater to the opportunities so it's all about balancing this we do uh, have like we at times we use power tools to uh, to cater to the demand and one issue like uh, Abhinavji was also mentioning like means once they got an order of around 9,000 pieces and they couldn't execute it, the mobile speaker so this issue is a is a pertinent like it's a persisting issue for a lot of organizations scale so uh, in order to achieve this scale considering the challenges of the material there should be fine balance between uh, what we call as handicraft or craft and kind of technology we employ to achieve optimal result of it. Yeah, like uh, uh, in my point, uh, I also agree with uh, both uh, Sanjeev and uh, Tony both. And uh, we need to have a uh, balance between handcraft and the machine work. And like nowadays, like now, if you look at most of the uh, machine usage is in the primary processing. Like Abhinav uh, Khan had clearly shown in the presentation, the primary processing can happen in the machine. Later, that can be converted into product uh, through your uh, hand skills. Then I have lots of product range uh, to support uh, this. So like as the person asked the question clearly, like through design, we can achieve that balance very well. Okay, so a part of the product making can be mechanized or maybe it can also support standardize the size and the dimension everything or like you know, when you make uh, the product in a large quantity okay uh, last two questions uh, there is a question from sunit salve what are the bamboo varieties suggested by mr patil for handicrafts <laughs> Raul, are you in? I think Raul is not there, but I think uh, for handicraft. Hello. Mm, yes, yes, you can go ahead, please. Please go ahead. So, for handicraft, any type of bamboo uh, is fine, and and depending upon the type of product we do, we can use literally any species of bamboo for handicraft. Okay. Uh, 
another question, Mr. Uh, this is from Nikhal. Uh, can we use the facilities to cure bamboos for private projects, or is the center only for research? Most probably, it is for uh, you know, Rahul. This is for again Rahul ji, but I can answer yeah. this. Uh, the okay. facility for treatment and all other facilities are open for anybody. Uh, please come to Chandrapur and have this facility. Use this facility. All the facilities are are open to everybody. Uh, minimum charges are charged for the for the services given there, and this center will take care of all your need. Thank you, thank you, everybody. I think we have overshoot the time. Now uh, I'll just you know wind up. Uh, today we had uh, we have had a very interesting uh, seminar. Thanks to Mr. Sanjeev and his uh, team. Uh, actually, we all know that Bambu provides for uh, small uh, landholders and landless access to two key markets, that is agriculture and wood products. It provides uh, rural households the additional advantage of being able to add value through local level skill processing, thereby contributing to the uh, creation of rural enterprise and job. That is very important. So today we have heard from uh, different uh, panelists, six panelists, experts in different fields. And I thank you, first of all, Mr. Sanjeev and his team for organizing such a wonderful uh, topic, uh, especially during this unprecedented time of pandemic COVID-19. And I have been taken back another 12, 13 years back by you. And thank you for that. And then all the panelists and all the uh, participants who have uh, who contributed a lot for this seminar. Thank you very much and good luck and good wishes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for organizing this. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar. Namaskar, Namaskar. <laughs>